Buongiorno a tutti. Allora, come state? Bene? Sì? Tutto ok? Cool. Oggi faccio il video della settimana 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 e 7. E che cosa studiamo oggi? Che cosa studiamo? Studiamo gli aggettivi possessivi. Allora, let's go a little bit closer. Oh, yes. Oh, I completely moved my camera then. Aggettivi possessivi. Ah, singolare. Yes, in this video we're just looking at singular possessive adjectives. Like, che cosa significa? <laughs> What does this mean? Um, so, in English, uh, you would say, for example, um, my hat, her car, his bike, your food, their house, our dog, whatever. So, um, it, we have a separate word, our, my, your, their, his, her, I think that's most of them, um, and we use that in front of a noun or in front of plural nouns, um, my houses, <laughs> my houses, um, my pens, my bottles, my papers, etc. Right? So that's what I mean. I mean those things that talk about possessions. Um, so let's have a think. Um, in the lesson, uh, pagina 4 del documento di questa settimana, uh, c'è un gioco. Okay, so there's a, a word search, um, and at the bottom, if you've had a little look at this, you will find <coughs> gli aggettivi possessivi qui, e anche qui. So these aren't all the ones, these are just basically half of them. These are um, how you say my, your, his, her, our, your plural. Um, we don't make a distinction with your in English, obviously. Um, and there. And also, remember that when you say his or her, his or her is the same form that you use when you're saying the formal your. Okay? Um, so, for example, um, il suo, um, il suo telefono, il suo telefonino, um, la sua borsa. So if you're addressing someone in the lay form and then you're talking about something that's yours, as in that belongs to the person you're addressing formally, you will use the third person possessive adjective. Okay, so it's as if you're saying his or her something. Now the thing that's um, a bit confusing about the Italian possessive adjectives, well there's a couple of things. Firstly, um, the words change. So. In English, we just say my. In Italian, you have uh, several ways of saying my. Today, we're just going to look at the singular options. So, you've probably heard um, expressions like amore mio. Amore mio. Do you know what I haven't got? I haven't got my small um, whiteboard to hand, but don't worry, I've got a stock of them. Non vi preoccupate. Don't you worry yourselves. Okay. Here's one. Um, so, amore mio. Now, it's possibly not the best example because there we've got the noun first, amore, and then we've got mio afterwards. Um, my love, love of mine, if you like. Amore mio. Um, can you think of a feminine one? So this is a masculine mio. We're going to have a look at that in a moment. So mio basically means my, and it normally comes in front of a noun, um, such as um, il mio um, passaporto, my passport. Um, but here in this expression, amore mio, it comes afterwards. So you'll see that sometimes. Um, this is the masculine one. So there's a famous one, <laughs> mamma mia, <laughs> okay? Uh, mother of mine, if you like. Oh my goodness, that kind of thing. Mamma mia. Okay, so that might help you to remember those two. Amore mio, mamma mia. Mio and mia. So we're going to have a look at how you normally use those. So um, if another thing that's unlike English is that when you um, say my something or other in Italian, 
Generally, you have to use the article in front of the word my. So, the definite article, I mean, and that means the word the. So, basically, if you're talking about something that belongs to me, you have to know the gender of the word. So, let's uh, use pasaporto. Pasaporto. That's your passport, or a passport. Pasaporto. I want to say my passport. For example, I have lost my passport. I have done that before. Not a nice thing. Okay, so my passport would be il mio. Il mio passaporto. So you need to get used to using the word the, then the word that means my, and the word that means my for a singular noun that's masculine like passaporto will be mio. So il mio plus whatever the noun is that's singular or masculine. Il mio passaporto. Okay, um, feminine noun. So a feminine singular noun. So I've got one. Using the same past tense phrase, ho perso, I have lost, ho perso, um, la mia, la mia, borsa. Ho perso la mia borsa. La mia, my, followed by something singular. But you notice il has become la and mio has become mia. La mia borsa. Che cosa ho perso? What did I lose? My handbag. Borsa. Okay, so we've seen il mio and la mia. Um, when you're saying your something or other, your singular noun, um, for example, your passport, passaporto, obviously stays the same, you need the il again, so there we need, um, let's do, uh, so we're talking about the informal to form now, il mio turns into il tuo, tuo, so like the word you, with an O at the end. Il tuo passaporto. So, if I wanted to say your, informal, your handbag. Where is your handbag, for example? Ma dove? Come si dice? So I'll give you the word borsa, which means handbag. So we need the article, la, and then we need the word your la tua borsa. So in this video, this is going to be a recurrent theme. You're going to have a masculine and a feminine noun. Generally, there'll be an O at the end of the masculine and an A at the end of the feminine, because I'm going to use some um, kind of common and useful, like obvious kind of uh, nouns. And then you'll have the article il or la, okay? And then you'll have the possessive adjective, um, mio, mia, tuo, tua. Let's move on to his and her. His and her. Right, so, il and la, suo and sua. Okay, um, so let's think of an example of something else um, that's masculine, masculine noun. So, il suo libro, see? La sua penna. Okay, now let's have a look at how these translate, okay? Because these can be confusing. So this one here, il suo libro, means either his pen, oh, scusa, <laughs> means either his book or her book. Hmm, his book or her book. It can translate as either il suo libro. This here can mean either his pen or her pen. Okay, so his and her, there isn't really a distinction between it. It's either going to be il suo or la sua, depending on what? The gender of the noun you're talking about. So, um, il suo libro 
This little possessive adjective here agrees with the gender and also the number of the noun. So there's one libro and there is a, a masculine noun, il libro. So um, that can get confusing. La sua penna, his or her pen. Right, so you need to know the gender of the object that you're talking about, basically. Don't worry if you get it wrong and you say something like um, la sua libro. Just don't worry too much about that. Although sometimes there can be words um, which are very similar, libro, libra, for example, and that can maybe cause confusion. But the main thing is, when you're talking about something that belongs to me, my, your, his or her, it's going to have the definite article generally there, then the little possessive adjective word, and then the, the noun. Okay? So, um, okay, let's think of something. Car, right? The word for car. Come and see You should know this by now. It's, you see it like every lesson. Machina. Mm -hmm, machina. Uh, una parola femminile. So what we're going to say now is her car. Her car. La. Sua. Machina. Her car. Okay. Now you're going to tell me how you say his car. His car. See. Si. È la stessa cosa. It's the same thing, his or her. So um, here, actually, doesn't make a distinction whether it belongs to him or her. Um, in English, you do. So that might be a bit confusing for, for Italians who are learning English. Um, okay, okay. So, il mio, la mia, oh, scusa. Il mio, la mia. Il tuo, la tua. Il suo, la sua. His or her. So, um, let's just have a little look at that crossword. Le parole intrecciate. Maybe that's how you say it. So here we've got il mio, la mia. Have a little look there. Oh, let's see if I can get it up closer. And... Will it focus? Will it focus? Focus over here, please. Well, hopefully you can see that. Um, ecco qua. La mia, il mio. It's not focusing, is it? Oh, well. Il suo, la sua. Okay, over here it says il nostro and la nostra. Il nostro, la nostra. Think of an example. Um, so a masculine thing. Oh, let's have a look. Uh, mm, mm. Dog. Come si dice in italiano? Cane. Si. See how I'm just assuming you got that. Um, il nostro. Cane. Our dog. Uh, il nostro cane si chiama Billy. Per esempio. Non è vero, ma. Non ho nemmeno un cane, dunque. Um, sì. Il nostro cane. Ah. La nostra casa. La nostra casa. Our house. Our house in the middle of a street. La nostra casa. Mm. So, you see, nostro, nostra, il nostro, la nostra, plus whatever the gender, whatever the, um, the, the, uh, the noun is that follows. So cane might be a bit confusing because it's got an e at the end, but you just kind of need to know that it's il cane. And then when you know it's il cane, you just have to remember nostro. So it begins with an N, like the word noi. Um, so that's a little sort of helping hand. Right, so when we get onto voi, like your plural, something that belongs to all of you, um, for example, your house or your dog, then it's very similar to nostro and nostra. We just change the N to a V. Okay, so. Il vostro cane. Come si chiama il vostro cane? What is your dog called? Dove si trova la vostra casa? Where is your house? Vostro, la vostra. 
questo è abbastanza facile, no? I think it's quite simple. You get used to it, it's confusing, but it's quite simple. Um, okay, the one that's a little bit less obvious is the last one, which bucks the trend a little bit. So, um, if you want to say there something, as in um, there uh, bottle, I can say bottle here, so we'll use that. Bottiglia, bottiglia, and let's think of something masculine, uh, coffee. Cafe. Again, finding inspiration from things on my desk. So, cafe bottiglia. Cafe bottiglia. So, we put in a definite article, il and la. You should know that that's an il and that's a la by now. If not, try and retain it. Um, the word for there is loro, which happens to mean they. Okay, so loro. Il loro caffè. La loro bottiglia. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to look at some examples of sentences which are in the past tense. I think, I think all of them are in the past tense. They should be. Um, I think all of them use avere as the auxiliary verb because I didn't want to make it too confusing. Um, and, uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to come up with um, a suitable um, noun that fits in the example. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write in whatever comes to mind and seems natural. <laughs> so um, this should be a useful one. Hopefully you'll understand what's being said. So let's zoom in a wee bit at the top. Qui in alto, guardiamo qui. Okay, this is the example I used at the beginning. Ho perso il mio. I have lost my something or other. My mind. Ho perso il mio Passaporto, passaporto, something masculine, singular. Il mio passaporto, molto bene. Um, okay, next one. Ho trovato la mia, che cosa ho trovato? Um, can you think of a feminine noun? Something that I might have found? La mia penna, la mia penna. Okay, that pen's got a lot better ink. Okay, what I'm going to do just for a sec is put the display down because it's a little bright and it's reflecting off the screen of my laptop, which I'm using as a monitor, and it's a little bit annoying. Okay, thanks for bearing with me. Okay, and then I'm going to zoom in as well. And yeah, così. Ecco. There is a bit of a reflection, but I mean, ignore it. Ho trovato la mia penna. È la mia. Hai scelto il tuo, so we're moving on to the two form now, your something. Hai scelto il tuo, first of all, what does scelto mean? Scelto. This is from a verb, which I think you will have probably seen. You'll have seen it in my instructions, uh, which are written in Italian and English, um, in bold and in red, on, like on my handout. So it's from the verb scegliere which, don't worry if you don't know it, scegliere means to choose, like to select from a choice of things, scegliere. And um, this is uh, just a very irregular past participle, don't be scared of it, scelto. Scegliere changes to scelto, and like most Italian verbs, it uses avere in the past, uh, past tense, passato prossimo. Hai scelto il tuo... Have you chosen your... Oh, I know one. Panino. Nice and easy. Have you chosen your sandwich? Il panino. Il tuo panino. Perfetto. Okay. Hmm. Now, this one, I just have to check the spelling on because I've written it slightly wrong before. So what I'm going to do, um, I've got a certain instrument in mind which I really should definitely know how to spell. So I'm going to just use my word reference app, um, which looks like that. Okay, it's cool, it's a great app, you should definitely get it. Uh, I saw this. 
Okay, so I'm going to look for the word guitar, which should come up as chitarra, which I think is C-H, oh, in Italiano, C-H-I-T-A-2-R-A. But, you know, sometimes <laughs> I just need to check him because sometimes I make mistakes. Okay, va bene. Si. Sì. Chitarra. Can you see that there? Chitarra. So this is a really useful app. If you haven't got the Word Reference app, it's free. Download it. You can use it on your desktop. It's uh, it's um, a great forum for finding terminology and stuff. So, hai suonato la tua chitarra? Chi Così. You see that there? Chitarra. Yeah, sounds like, you know, it's something that you could easily write with a G. <clears throat> if you did write guitar in Italian with a G and you wanted to keep that G sound, you'd have to keep the H in there. G. G. So, um, as it happens, it's not spelt with a G, it's spelt with a CH, so it's a key. Like in the question, who? Chi? Chi è? Chi è la porta? Eccetera. Okay, la tua chitarra. Um, sadly, my guitar isn't in here, but if it were, I could say, questa è la mia chitarra. Non è la tua, è la mia. Si. Okay, let's move on to number five. Um, Carla ha portato... Il tuo, oh no, no, scusa, that shouldn't be il tuo, so it should be il suo, because we've done my, and we've done your, we're moving on to his or her now. Carla is a lady, so il suo, she has brought, or she has in to carry, or she has worn, portare can mean to wear, like to wear clothes, so um, Carla ha portato il suo cappello, cappello. Cos'è un cappello? It's something that I wear quite often. A hat. Allora, il suo cappello. Marco ha lavato la sua hmm, ah, macchina. Oh, I think that's my husband arriving here. <coughs> I'm just recording a video, Nico, okay? Uh, yeah, <laughs> try not to, I'll be a few minutes. Um, Marco ha lavato la sua macchina. He washed his car. La sua macchina. But if we were to change Marco to, say, um, Carla, just swap out the subject of the sentence, then the sentence would still be correct. Carla ha lavato la sua macchina. She washed her car. So his or her is either il suo or la sua, depending on the gender of the noun that follows. Okay, andiamo avanti, let's go ahead. Abbiamo pagato il nostro... Hmm. We have paid our... something masculine. Il nostro... Conto. That's what I'm thinking. We have paid our bill, or our account, if you like. Conto, like from the verb contare, to count, uno, due, tre, quattro, etc. So, il nostro, our, followed by something masculine. Abbiamo dipinto la nostra, ah, I know what I want to put here, camera. So, we have painted our, la nostra, camera, che cos'è? Camera. Una camera non è questa cosa, no. Una camera is a room. Una camera da letto, per esempio, is a bedroom. Camera. Um, so, la nostra, our, plus something feminine. Now, that verb there, dipingere, to paint. To paint. Dipingere. Another nice verb there, to paint. Very irregular past participle. Di pinto. Così. Di pinto. Okay, let's have a look at the last two. E poi basta. Hanno dimenticato il loro... Hmm. Dimenticato. Che significa dimenticato? 
That's from the verb dimenticare. Dimenticare. So you could think of the word dementia, if that helps. Dimenticare is to forget. They have forgotten their... Il loro... Hmm, il loro... What could they forget? Libro. They have forgotten their book. Just one book. All of these nouns are singular. So we're not looking at how you say their books or my books yet. That would just take too long. Um, but I'll get into that in another video. Okay, lastly, ultima cosa. Hanno venduto la loro... Let's just zoom in one little bit for that one. Hanno venduto la loro... What do you think they have sold? I'm going to say la, ro... la loro casa. They have sold their house. La loro, il loro. So that's how we look at possessive adjectives. Let me just zoom back out. Ecco così. Um, so those people who came to class, all the people on the course, um, we're going to get my email in a moment. Um, have a little look at this uh, word search and find these phrases in the text. Obviously there's no space in between the words so you have to work a little bit harder to find them. Um, but all of these should be there and then in the gaps here I want you to write down what it is that I've said belongs to these people. So it might be for example, let's see if I can find one, um, la, I won't show you where it is, la tua giacca, la tua giacca, your jacket. Okay. Um, can't see any others at the moment, but um, but you should be able to find them all on there. So that should get you really familiar with how you say my, your, his, her, our, and their for something singular. Just remember that his and her is going to be the same word. It's just whether it's suo or sua, depending on the noun that follows. And it's the gender of the noun rather than the gender of the person. So that can get a bit confusing. Okay, grazie mille. That's enough for today. Um, ci vediamo la settimana prossima. Buona giornata. Ciao.